Welcome to our live training session. We're going to be taking a look at how to calibrate and tune a Honda S2000 that's been supercharged with a Link G4X plug and play standalone system. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. We're going to find it is a bone stock F20C engine that's in our S2000 here, so it's a two liter engine. It has an HKS supercharger kit that's been installed. Now, in addition to this, we have 750cc injectors, a drop-in fuel pump, and we also have a header back exhaust system along with an AEM wideband that's been wired into our Link G4X system. Now, we're going to be learning how to calibrate and tune this on 93 octane. We have a lot to talk about here. Let's jump into our live training session so we can get started creating the base session file so we can begin our live training process. Welcome to our live training session here with our supercharged Honda S2000. Now we just went over all the details of the vehicle. Let's jump into our Link G4X software so we can begin creating our base file to upload into the Link G4X to get the engine to fire off and run and start our live training process. Now, first thing we need to do here is open up a file that's associated to the box that we're working with. Now in my case, this is a Honda S2000 plug and play G4X box. So we're gonna go into the directory for all the base maps, open up that specific base file, and then we'll start modifying it from that point. Now we need to account for things like our fuel injector size or any sensors that we've added on to the vehicle in order to make sure that the ECU is going to recognize those and allow the engine to fire up and run properly. We're going to be changing a lot of other things in the base file because I find that the base files from Link don't have enough things enabled to really dig in and do advanced calibration strategies. They're really meant to just get the engine to fire off and run if it's a stock equivalent uh, vehicle. So for the case of the S2000 base map, it wouldn't be able to account for the injectors or the supercharger. It's there to run a stock equivalent Honda S2000. So we need to modify it to be able to run this particular combination of parts that we have installed on the vehicle. So let's go in here. We're gonna go in the first thing we're gonna do is go to file. We're gonna go to open. And this is gonna take me into the Link G4X base map directory and we're taking a look down here in all of our different base maps we find that we have a Honda S2000 AP1 G4X extreme plugin that's the box that I'm working with for this particular application so that's what we want to grab to begin with now if you have a universal application you'll grab one of your universal files such as a Fury default map um, if you're using an Atom you can grab an Atom map and then start to calibrate and change everything from that point but in this case I have this plug and play Link has done the majority of the work for us. They've at least went through, mapped out all the inputs and outputs, and accounted for everything so that when we're opening up that specific map, it should start and run and have a, a reasonable chance of starting and running uh, the particular combination of parts that you're, you're working with, but you have to go and change some things specific to your setup. That's, again, what we're going to be going through here in this tutorial. So I'm going to go in right now and grab this particular file, and I'm going to click Open. Now at this point, we want to go in and save this file right off the bat as a new name. We don't want to go in anytime we're modifying or changing anything in the file. We don't want to go here to file and go to save. That'll save over top of this default file. We might want this file to start off with for another S2000. If we're starting off, let's say if it's not supercharged, but it's turbocharged, or maybe it's naturally aspirated. We don't want to constantly save what we're changing here in this base map or tuning the, the calibration process and tuning the, the file, we don't want to change everything and overwrite the original equivalent from Link. That's very important. They give us a way that we can always go backwards to the original the original file um, and just making sure that we have that available to us at any time. So what I'm going to do right now is go to File and we'll go to Save As. And in Save As, we can go in and save this file into a specific folder. Now I actually have my own folder here. I've created in the Documents. I've created a subfolder called Link. And this is where I save all kinds of different files for the link projects I'm working with, whether it's a G4 Plus or a G4X. I'm going to go in here to New Folder, and I'm just going to call this EPA S2000, and I'll call it Supercharged to give it a custom name. All right, so in here, we can go and click Save, and it'll save this original file. What I want to do right now is overwrite this name, and I want to save it as a new name. So I'm going to go and save this just as my base file. You can call this whatever you'd like. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to call it base file and click save. Now we've overwritten the original equivalent file from Link, but we are now able to just go file save if we want to save it, file save. And that'll allow me to save over top of this specific file. I don't have to worry about overwriting that original file. We always want to make sure we do that, giving ourselves a way that we can step backwards if we need to. And taking a look at the original equivalent file from Link. Now, worst case, if you did oversave on top of that original file, you could go download the Link software again. It'll reinstall those base files 
in the subfolder for you. So it'll actually add that back in um, and you could actually just, you know, again, uninstall the software, reinstall the software, and it'll have all the files in case you wanted that specific file. Not a big deal if you overwrite it, but just more work, creating more work for yourself. So try not to do that. We'll make sure we save it here right off the bat as our base file. Now, as we go through the tuning process, we will be saving these as different names. So idle startup, we might save it as that particular name. So it'll be specific to what we're accomplishing in that specific tutorial or process. We might have one called part throttle, uh, part throttle cruise tuning, wide open throttle tuning, VTEC tuning, whatever the case may be. I'm going to save those as specific steps because it allows me to move backwards in the calibration process. If for some reason something's not going correctly, you will make mistakes as you're starting off and working with your vehicle and trying to learn how to calibrate and tune it. You just want to make sure that you're giving yourselves a way to go backwards or forwards in the process. Link will not automatically back up or save portions of what you were tuning at in terms of a calibration. So it doesn't know if you're tuning at part throttle or you're tuning at wide open throttle. If you click file save, it'll constantly just save it as the last changes that you've made before you shut down the software. So it's important that we save in segments of calibrating and working within our, uh, our file here for the link. And the base file is going to be just called base file because that's what I'm building in this video, just base file. All right. What we're going to do here is now start off all the way over here to the left under the basics layout. This specific page is allowing us to edit and get through all the basic parameters that have to be right in order for the engine to fire off. We're going to move from left all the way here in our page layouts all the way to the right. We go all the way over here. There is a massive amount of page layouts here. This exposes everything in the software in the most logical way possible. This is what I use to calibrate and tune working with the link and I think it makes the most sense. This specific layout is available to download in the course packet for the Link G4X right into the course directory. So you can actually go and replicate this particular uh, layout on your laptop. If we go to layout here, you can see you can just choose load layout. And in the layouts, I've uh, given you here the Link G4X master layouts. There's logging layouts, but there's two different resolution sizes for the master layouts. The master layout is what we have open here. The logging layout is used on the logging side of the software, which I don't use when I'm typically going into calibrating and tuning. I'm sitting in front of the laptop. I'm typically always interfacing with my master layout or my calibration side of the software. So we have these. Again, you can download these right from that course directory. Just get started off with. It'll save you a tremendous amount of time getting things going and uh, you'll be able to follow exa along exactly what I have on my screen right here so you can uh, see exactly what we're doing and replicate that on your laptop. The, the key to being able to tune efficiently with the link is having a solid layout. These layouts take me quite a bit of time to set up and uh, probably about a day or two to lay them all out and make sure that they're the exact way I'd like to work with so I'm most, most efficient and again I'm giving that to you with the course it'll save you a tremendous amount of time to get up and running on the link and just to get things started. So. Uh, choose one of these options. I have mine loaded here on the screen. So we're going to start off on the basics page here and we're going to work our way across from left to right. And that's how I always start my process. When I'm building a base file, I go from left to right across all of these different pages to make sure I'm accounting for all the details, building the base map or doing the tuning. Okay, let's jump in here and talk about what we're going to change in this basic page and then we'll just move through all the rest of them. So the first thing, let's start off here at the top under configuration. We're going to go down through our parameters here. So this is a four-cylinder engine. It's a four-stroke, um, and we don't need to change anything else in here. The firing order is 1342 for the engine, so that's correct. Now under fuel main here, we have a, a couple things we need to update. The injection mode is going to be sequential. We have a cam sync, and we have a crank trigger. Having both a, a crank trigger and a cam sync allow us to fire the injector sequentially, so we're able to time the injection event around the number one cylinder position so we know where top dead center is and we can time the injection event around that for all the rest of the cylinders. Now we want to use sequential when we have a cam sync which is the way the Honda has designed the engine to run and we are going to keep injection mode on sequential. It is the most ideal so we're going to keep this option here. The next option, fuel equation mode. This dictates the fuel model that we're working with in the link. Uh, right now it's on traditional which is an injection time based strategy meaning the values in our main fuel table combined with our master fuel, these will scale with the injector pulse what's going to be that different load in RPM points. It's relatively simple to work with and all the link base files are in traditional mode. I like to work with the model mode, which is a volumetric efficiency, speed density style strategy. It is math model, it makes a lot more sense to me, and it's going to be more consistent engine to engine. 
you're going to be working with a Link G4X across multiple different kinds of engines, it makes the calibration process more streamlined and more straightforward because you know what to expect in terms of programming values in your main field table. If you're dealing with this traditional mode and you're dealing- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.